Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel for a brand new video. And in today's video, I'm gonna start off by telling you all a story. When I was in high school, grade 10 specifically, I decided at that point that I wanted to be a professional musician the rest of my life. So I joined a band and I found that the members in the band didn't really seem to care as much as I did at the time. And I mean, it's high school, you know, they got girlfriends, I had a girlfriend. Things just kept kind of getting in the way for band practices or just felt like we were spinning our wheels and not really getting anywhere. After that band broke up, I was still in high school and I still had this dream that I needed to do something with. I knew a bunch of awesome musicians at my high school, but getting them all individually into a room and playing with them or jamming with them was gonna be a long process to actually find some guys who were serious about music and who wanted to form a band with me. My mom and dad at the time were using a Audio-Technica AT2020 to do voiceovers for their online school. I took this microphone and I put it above my drum set on a boom stand. I then proceeded to track a bunch of ideas, just random beats, tom fills, stuff that I had in my sort of playing vocabulary at the time, I tracked it all into GarageBand. In GarageBand, there was a preset that I used. I can't remember what it was called, but essentially when I clicked it, it applied compression and EQ, and it made this drum sound really good considering there was only one microphone in the room. From there, I took these ideas and I bounced them out into iTunes, burned them onto a whole stack of CDs, and then went to high school the next day and handed out these CDs to everybody who had a guitar or a bass or fuck's sakes played piano. I don't know, anybody who played an instrument who I thought would maybe be down to start a band with me, I handed them a CD and I said here here's a bunch of ideas bring this home throw it on loop and jam over it and let me know if you come up with anything most of the guys that I gave these CDs to I never heard from again but there was a couple that did stick they came back to me and they were like hey Wyatt track number three on this CD was really cool I have this idea you want to get together and I would get together with those individuals and a couple of them actually we turned those early ideas off that CD into songs that became the set list for some of my very first bands the reason I tell you this story is because that concept of taking one microphone, putting it above the kit and getting a decent quality sound to use in pre-production or to use in just tracking ideas or basic YouTube videos or any other application that you want is going to be the focus of this video. We're going to take a look at four different microphones. We're going to take a look at the AT2020, the SR25, the SR314 and the OC18. All four of these microphones I've used over the years as overhead microphones in stereo pairs and the AT2020 specifically, as I mentioned in the story, I used as a room mic at one point to capture my kit. And I actually did that for a really long time. Now, what inspired this video is questions from the community, from you guys, people coming to me and asking me, if I don't have any microphones, where should I start? And this is where you start. These four options are fantastic microphones, not only now for a player who just started micing the kit, but also in the long run. So they're gonna hold up for a really long time in different situations. The evolution that I personally took was I started with an AT2020 over top of the kit. Then I added a kick drum mic. I next got the Beta 52A, then I added an SM57 to the snare. And those three microphones alone, you can get a really long way with. We're actually gonna close out this video with me demonstrating some patterns and beats over top of that specific microphone set, those three guys. Now, before we get to that, I wanna take you through both a mono and a stereo set of each of those microphones used first as an overhead room mic, and then second as stereo overheads. Because once you get past the overhead mic, snare mic, kick mic, then you need to start miking the rest of the kit. Maybe some closed mics on the cymbals, definitely some closed mics on the toms, but the overhead mic that you're gonna choose, you can simply just buy a second of later on and it automatically becomes your stereo pair for later down the road when you have a more expensive, more professional uh, mic set for your kit. Let's check out what one mic above my drum set sounds like.
So there you have demonstrations of four different room mics directly over top of my kit. You guys go down to the comments right now and let me know which of those four mics you thought sounded the best. Now the natural progression after buying that first room mic is to get a second later on when you start closed micing. Because just taking whatever room mic you pick now and duplicating it and then putting one on either side of the kit about five feet off the snare is gonna give you a great stereo overhead mix. So let's check out the real application of all of these microphones in stereo sets above my kit right now. So there you have all of the mics demoed again, but this time we did in stereo pairs. So you had a right and left pan. Let me know down in the comments what you noticed differently about the microphones in comparison to when there was just a single one over top of the kit. And now in this new application, which one did you think sounded the best? Me personally, I've used all of these microphones in the stereo pairs as overheads throughout the years. Currently I'm using the OC18 stereo set, but all of them have really held up and got the job done in the covers that you guys have all checked out and the session work that I've performed on throughout my career. So now the last playing situation I'm going to take you through is the best bang for your buck in my opinion for anybody looking to capture their kit but wants to do it with as few mics as possible. In this next example I'm going to have a Beta 52A on my kick drum, I'm going to have an SM57 on the snare drum and then directly six feet above the snare drum a AT2020. First I'm going to take you through an example that's just DI or direct input. There's going to be no processing on the actual mic feeds. I'm just going to do a quick level mix and then for the second example with this set I actually had Chris Gazelle take this example and mix all three of these trying to get the best sound that he could with these three microphones. So this will give you a fantastic idea of just using AT2020, Beta 52A and SM57 what you can actually get out of those microphones after taking that into a DAW and applying processing.
So there you guys have it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Something I want to stress before I leave you is that the reason why I did this video and why I chose the mics that I chose for this video and presented them in the application I did is because these are microphones that, and I already said this, so I'm reiterating it, but these are microphones that you can buy and use in these basic applications, but then use in mic sets going forward for years to come. They will all hold up because they're such incredible microphones. There are options on the market where you can pay $200 and get a full mic set, 16 mics and have closed mics right away. But those microphones in quality will have to be replaced. Every single one of them will have to be swapped out later on for more professional versions. Whereas with this three set that I presented at the end, or even just the room mics and the stereo pans, with equipment of this quality, it's gonna service you now and then service you for years to come. Let me know down in the comments which playing examples you thought sounded the best. I'd love to hear some feedback from you guys. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you wanna support this channel, you can check out my Patreon and merch link in the description down below. Once again, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you all very soon with something new.